plug from the stator, which is what you call an alternator in your car. It's the AC charging system for this 1972 shovelhead engine. I don't know if you can see that, but things all burned up. Something shorted out. I don't know if it was uh, the regulator wire under the bike or if it was something that shorted out in here, if the heat just melted all this rubber and the pin shorted out, the wire shorted out and together, but you can see the heat burn on the case there when that thing shorted out. So I gotta take that, so I have to pull all this bearing cage off, pulley, engine pulley off. I have to pull off the stator cover that I made years ago. I mean, all this stuff probably hasn't been off of this bike in over 20 years. So I'm gonna pull this stuff off, put a new stator and rotor in it, put a new regulator on it, wire it up, and we should be ready to ride again. When I originally built this bike, this out of bearing support was on it. It did have the four inch belt drive, which back in the late nineties, which is when I built this bike was kind of the thing. I'm not crazy about it anymore. You can see it's all tore up on the edge. My pant legs have got caught in it a million times. I'm probably at some point gonna take this off and put a three or two inch belt drive on it. But right now, you know, I'm not in a position to do that. I just got so much going on, but um, anyhow, this bearing support is something I made after the fact, after the bike was on the cover at Easy Rider. I was pulling so many wheelies on it that it really needed the support out here. And you could actually, I threw the belt one time pulling a wheelie um, because this flexed so hard back that the belt was able to jump off. So I made that bearing support for it. Well, you can see this belt's struggling. Um, nice long strip of Kevlar there. But uh, one of these days, I'm gonna take this off and, and put a, a, a narrower belt drive on it. Careful with that chrome. I use a ball-ended Allen socket to get into these tight spots. You know, it was never gonna be easy getting in there some of these, so I use the ball end to get those out. That thing's full of engine oil. It's always leaked out of there. I don't know if you can see that, it's drove me crazy. Ever since the bike was built, that engine's leaked oil out of that main seal. So this is the rotor which is basically a bunch of magnets stuck on a rotating disc. And that's what creates electrical field that charges the battery and runs everything on the bike. And it's hard to get off because the magnets are trying to hold it on the bike, but I'll get it, everything's super oily. So I'm having a hard time getting a grip on it. So these are the magnets in the rotor and these are the windings on the stator. And what happens is there's a positive pole on a magnet and a negative pole and a positive pole and a negative pole. So what happens is a positive pole passes over one of these windings. It creates electromotive force, which you know you can basically call voltage and current in one direction. And then the negative magnet crosses over it and it changes direction. That's why it's called the alternator because it's alternating current. It's going positive, negative, positive, negative. And what's happening is you're creating current in two different directions real quick every time one of these magnets rolls over. There's 12 poles here, 12 magnets. So six times every rotation, it takes a positive charge and negative charge on each one of these windings. That's what creates the current that 
runs your ignition, runs your lights, and charges your battery. So, kind of a big step up over the generator that was run, you know, on Harley Davidson's through 1969, 1970. They converted everything over to the stator and rotor um, alternating current. They correct it through the regulator here, the regulator rectifier, which you know keeps you charging in between 12 and 13 and a half volts and it also converts your AC current to DC current. I know I'm getting kind of technical here. A lot of you really don't care about that stuff. I thought I'd explain it to you because I got the parts off. Anyhow, um, that's how this system works. So these usually don't go bad because it's just magnets. The only way they'll go bad is if the magnets come unglued. I'm just gonna replace the whole system with another system that I have because I wanna ride this bike a lot and I don't wanna deal with any nonsense. So I have some really good stuff I'm gonna put in here. I'm gonna pop this stator off. You know, I'll show you this plug. I'll burn up this plug is when I get it out. And then I'm probably gonna change this seal right here on the engine because the thing leaking like that is just driving me absolutely nuts. And um, while I hear everything apart, it's the thing to do. Those four screws hold the stator in and just pry it off. Then I'll undo these two screws back here that hold the plug retainer in and it's ready to come off. This was a four pin plug. There was two pins here and two here. These should be the same length as these. These guys are just burned up. So um, this thing's no good. It's headed for the recycling bin. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna replace the regulator rectifier while I have it apart because trying to put parts that may or may not be good on here is a waste of time. I haven't changed these parts in over 20 years on this bike. So I'm not worried about the expense of doing it, but that just goes to show you and we were riding this bike in Daytona and having a good old time and all of a sudden it quit charging the battery. And that's why, and you can see right here, this wire is busted, the insulation's busted off of that wire right there. And this is probably contacting one of these magnets or something inside here that's just, stuff has gotten hot over the years from the engine and from the charging and all the vibration and oil and everything else. And the wiring insulation is just chipping away from it. And um, that's why this thing quit charging the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this seal out and uh, I usually start at the edge of the seal. You know, you have to hammer, you want to hammer away from this steel seal boss so you don't damage it. And you also don't want to, you don't want to nail the bearing with your screwdriver. This is your sprocket shaft spacer that runs in the seal. I'm gonna check it, make sure everything's okay with it. It looks clean. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with some memory cloth to keep it clean so it doesn't tear the new seal that I put on. The new seal will go in like this, but I'll put the sprocket shaft spacer in first. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up, make sure it doesn't have any issues that's gonna make it tear this seal one leak. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of the oil that's come out of that engine and lubricate the sprocket shaft spacer. I'll go ahead and put the seal over the spacer. And it's a good fit. Hopefully this solves my problem. I don't see any nicks or anything inside the seal boss that is causing it to leak. So the assumption is that it was just the seal was bad. It was probably torn when it was put on. Somebody was being careless. Like I said, that was done over 20 years ago. And I'm just gonna tap this seal in. Gotta kind of tap it around. And this is a little trick I do to see the seal like this. So you don't make a bad swing and hit something you don't wanna hit. You put a ball peen hammer against the seal and tap that hammer with another hammer. And then you have a lot less chance because you're not swinging this one and missing. So it's already seated where you want it. Little trick my dad taught me years ago. Use it, love it, it works. Here's a stator I'm gonna put in the bike. It's used, but it's in excellent condition um, with a good working regulator come out of another running bike that I had. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. I use some spray lube on the rubber plug that has to go through the case. It helps me get it through the case. These things aren't easy to get through there. As you're about to see, I'm gonna have to wrestle this thing through. It's a tight fit because it's supposed to seal 
oil and dirt and everything else from oil from getting out and dirt from getting in so it's supposed to seal really good so I usually work it up through there with the screwdriver being careful not to puncture the plug and it's up through there this is a male plug so that the female plug from the regulator can engage it so there we go it needs to come through like that I go ahead and clean these screws off it's a great cleaner Blow them off with a blow fitting. Make sure they're clean. And I put thread locker on it so that it will not come out on me because there's a lot of vibration going on down here. And uh, things get real ugly real quick. If one of those screws comes out, it's going to try and bind up that rotor, probably break off, and then jam inside the rotor and the magnet and you're gonna the engine will just destroy what's in there it won't lock the engine up <laughs> but it will kill your charging system and now you got to push the damn thing okay change the main seal put a new rotor in lock tighted the screws I've got my rotor spacer in there now time to put on the rotor and it'll basically, once you line the splines up, it'll pull itself on because of the magnets. So watch this. See that? Slides right on. A new one's a little stiffer usually because the, the spline piece is cut pretty tight. But that one slid right on and the magnets actually pull it on. So there I am. I'm ready to go. Before I put all this cover and bearing cage back on the outside of the engine here, I'm going to use the access I have to get in here and remove this regulator rectifier. I don't know if it's good or if it's bad, but it's, I'm not about to find out the hard way. I'm going to change it, and I know it's different anyhow. The plug is different. It's probably a different amp rating from this stated rotor I have on this bike. I'm going to go ahead and change that so I have a matching system on this bike, and I should be good for another 20 years. Got the old regulator rectifier out of the bike. Um, it's pretty beat up. It's kind of cool. You know, when I put this on the bike, I was probably 29, 30 years old. My wife was probably in eighth or ninth grade. Um, <laughs> you know, just a long time ago, before the internet, before YouTube, before Google search, before eBay, you know, just um, before Instagram. Things were such a different world back then. And, uh, you know, so anyhow, um, it's kind of cool to take this part off. I'm just going to throw it away. You know, it has no sentimental value to me at all, but I just look at it and think about what I was doing back then. Like when I built this bike, this is kind of like the third really good solid bike that I built that people were noticing. And the fact that I still have it after all these years, thanks to Tucker Hall, <laughs> um, is, is amazing. But, you know, and it's, it's my favorite. But just to take this part off and think about you know, that, that's how old I was when I put this on, you know, I didn't have any kids and, and uh, never thought I'd live outside of Florida, you know, life was just a different time. Um, I hadn't done Biker Build Off yet. So, you know, I had been in the magazines, but I hadn't done Biker Build Off yet. So a lot of people, you know, who knew me from Biker Build Off didn't really know what I was doing or who I was. So um, just kind of a cool moment um, for me to reflect on. And now I'm gonna go throw it in the garbage. On a stock Harley, they mount this regulator rectifier just a few inches from where the plug is. That's why the plug is only a few inches long. I've got mine located about 10, 12 inches back from that. So I gotta extend these two leads. I'll show you how I do it. I'm gonna cut it in two different spots. The reason is I'm gonna solder extensions in here and I don't want the solder joints to be next to each other because if for any reason they break through the insulation, they can contact. Whereas when I have them staggered like this, even if they break through the insulation I put on them, they won't contact the other wire. I've got a length of 12 gauge wire here that I'm gonna use to extend them and I just find the midpoint of that and I cut it right there and that should give me two equal extensions now. And this is gonna be longer than what I need, but it's kind of nice to have a little length there. I can always wrap it, roll it up and tie it up underneath the bike, but a little bit of extra length is nice sometimes if you have to work on the bike, you wanna be able to pull it off. 
So I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra length there. This wire is a wire that charges the battery. So I'm gonna connect that to the bike once I get these extensions made. So I just take my wire stripper, strip a nice healthy length of wire there. Go on each end. Do my other wire. I wrap my wire from the regulator rectifier to my extension wire. And I just use a electrical jumper cable here, but it's got an alligator clip on either end. So I use this alligator clips to hold my piece together so that I'm not trying to hold it and fight it. And then I just heat real quick with the soldering iron, you know, preheat that wire. And this is copper wire, so it's gonna take the heat real fast. And what you do is, because I cut one longer than the other, but the extensions are the same length, now my joints line, I know which wire goes to which one. It doesn't really matter on this part because it's an AC circuit, but um, you know you don't have to worry about, did I get connect which one to the right one because they go just like that. The change in length automatically lines them up. I got my four solder joints done on the extension. Now I just get my heat gun. Crank up some heat, heat, sh heat shrink tubing. So I've got the regulator rectifier plug extended. So I'm ready to install this. And then once I get this installed, I plug it in, I tie the wires up, and I have to connect the battery lead to the circuit on the bike that's gonna charge the battery. I'm ready to put the cover back on the pulley on the belt on and um, bearing cage and fire it up, make sure it's charging. Check a few things on the bike because I've ridden it since March and uh, go ahead and take it for a spin. I'm kind of picky about my wiring because I don't ever have electrical problems on my bike. So I want to keep it that way. So I just come up. It's kind of... All right, so I've got the regulator rectifier installed, wired up to the circuit of the bike so that it's ready to charge the battery, plugged into the stator rotor assembly up front here. So now I'm ready to put the primary back on, the um, stator rotor cover, front pulley belt, and all the bearing cage support that goes with that. I'm gonna do a few checks on the bike, and then I'm ready to run it. As always, thread lockers on pretty much everything. just need it they just need it these things are shakers man the Harley Davidson V-twin shake itself to death if you let it you can't let it do that I'm gonna go ahead and put a ton of red thread locker on this shaft because that's the one thing you don't ever want coming off. I'm not only gonna put it on the shaft, I'm gonna put it on the female threads of the nut. Just get as much coverage as possible because you don't ever want to see that thing come off. Never ever.
check and make sure it rolls free after you torque that. It does. This outer pull bearing goes in next. It takes four bolts, one of them is broken off. I might even wanna try and fight that thing out of there. I don't wanna deal with it, so I'm just gonna use the three. I've been riding it. God knows how long that bolt's been broken. I've been riding it forever, never had an issue. Something, like I said, I'm gonna change the belt drive at some point, so no sense in me fighting that out of there today. Leave that battle for another day. Feel good about getting ready to put this out of bearing cage on. Starting to run out of parts. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, I got that bearing cage on. You always want to check when you're working with the drive line and rotating parts, make sure everything rolls free, it does. I've got this thing ready to start. I'm gonna make sure it's got engine oil, make sure it's got gear oil, check the tire pressures, just check a few things on it. This bolt, this top motor mount bolt has vibrated loose again. I've probably tightened that thing 400 times since I've owned this bike and it keeps coming loose. I don't know why the threads are good. Uh, the male and female threads are good there. So I don't know why it keeps coming loose, but I'm gonna tighten it again. One lo little loose motor mount bolt like that will make a bike shake like you have no idea. So. I'm gonna go ahead and, and tighten that back up and just check the bike over and um, fire it up. See how, lo how loose that motor mount bolt was. I remember tightening it in Daytona the last time I rode it. I'm gonna put some red thread locker on it. Hopefully it'll, the thing will hold, man. I, I don't know why it wants to come loose all the time. But when these heads were done, built these motor mounts up and put good steel thread inserts in there so that they would hold and um, something like this and really make it shake. So you see, I'm gonna pull down tight on it. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, stripped out. That's that Kung Fu grip right there. That one's loose too. It is. All right, I'm trying to fix this. It hurts your fingertips to shake so bad with loose motor mounts like that. Same thing there. Good thread that's holding tight. I'm pulling hard. <clears throat> that one's tight. Go ahead and look, take a look at these tire pressures. These are run 35 to 40 pounds in the front. I decided to go ahead and do an oil change while I was doing all this. It's, I put a lot of miles on this bike. I don't know how many are on it since I changed it last, but better safe than sorry. I'm going to Sturgis. Probably put a couple thousand miles on it at Sturgis. So go ahead and put some Z-Max 20W50 synthetic in it. Loves it, leaks it, and uh, never leaves me, never leaves me. High and dry. It's mid-July. I haven't run blue since early March. So I'm as curious as you are to see how she's gonna respond. I'm gonna try and give it a start now and see what happens here. Give it a couple choke kicks.
stumped out. You know, all that oil was in the crankcase. But after all these months, been sitting, um, wants to fire up for me. A lot of guys who know how to kickstart a bike have not been able to start Blue. That's because Blue loves me and loves them not. But I let a few people ride Blue too, and they're like, whoa. But anyhow, um, she started right up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up. Maybe, uh, why don't we run it through the gears? so special to me. I mean, I started building this bike before anybody knew my name. It took me a couple of years to build it because I had other ongoing projects, but I was building this for myself. My buddy George walked in one day. George had just got out of prison, walked in my shop with a brown paper bag full of fives, tens, and twenties, with $35,000 in it, and said, that bike right there is mine. You're going to build that for me. And I ended up finishing this for him, and it was really one of the first bikes I'd built it. I really got paid good money on George ended up getting murdered in 2003 while we were filming Biker Build Off with Dave Perowitz. Um, just a really crazy time in my life. There's a whole litany of stories that go along with this bike regarding all of that. This bike is going to be a memorial to Georgie Jupin, whose life ended tragically earlier this year. This is the fender we're going to use on the back of the bike and the sissy bar. It's actually one we built for my buddy George's bike. His uh, girlfriend murdered him in January, so he ain't be riding with us anymore. His motto was, you know, hurry for today and tomorrow. I mean, you know, he was one of those kind of guys. I mean, we all try to think that way, but he lived it. <laughs> Every day was Friday. That's him, just cruising down the road, loving life. But I ended up getting the bike back, and I've had it all these years. Um, it's really, really amazing. It's been everywhere. This bike used to stay at West Coast Choppers. Jesse used to keep blue for me at West Coast Choppers. I had a girlfriend that lived in California when I was out in California doing business or doing business in Nevada and riding, I would fly into Long Beach, uh, grab Blue, and sometimes I would ride it from Long Beach to Las Vegas and leave it at Mondo shop in Vegas, and then I'd fly into Vegas and pick Blue up and ride all over the West Coast. So really a lot of history between the two of us. This is the only custom bike I've built in 35 years that I still own. Everything else is gone. This is the one that stayed with me um, and that I've stayed with. Uh, it's really one of the favorite bikes I've ever built. Like all my bikes, I got the Indian Larry push rod tube covers on here. Larry actually really loved this bike. And um, so I've got those covers on him to keep him with me all the time and they remind me of him every time I look at it. And I've got cast aluminum velocity stack from Big Paul at Bare Knuckle Choppers. I put a lot of love and hard work into this bike over the years. I'm glad I still have it. I know when I ride it, people really respond to seeing me on it. I hope I see you out there somewhere on it. But I wanna wish Blue a happy 50th birthday. It's a 1972 Harley Davidson shovel head engine, so it's 50 years old this year. I bought the bike that the engine came out of 25 years ago in 1997, so 25 year anniversary of me acquiring it and 50 years for the engine leaving Milwaukee. There's a few great seconds of me riding this bike during the Biker Build Off versus Indian Larry in 2003. Look at that, even the stomach gets to shine when I talk about her. What can I say? She's my baby.